you know and you said about his gaze now this gaze that is often mentioned by so many people isn't it mm-hmm. just a gaze and he will transform a person mm-hmm. just a gaze mm-hmm. it so happened with my uncle jivan jivan uncle that is jivan baba as most of the devotees know him mm-hmm. by the way he also passed last year uh uh-huh. at a ripe age of about 98 or 99 years almost he was about to complete a century amazing so he had a long association with maharaj ji but uh now since <laughs> it has come up when maharaj ji uh came to that region in early 40s at that time jivan chacha jivan uncle himself mm-hmm. chacha yeah chacha yeah and uh, he had all the vices oh, about all kinds of intoxications he I would see. vices yes i thought that yeah <laughs> he would drink he would smoke he would smoke hashish he would take even opium all kinds of the alcoholic uh, drinks sure and most of the times he would be intoxicated mm-hmm. that he would begin in morning and continue until night ah uh-huh. so that is how he was at that time when he met maharaj ji for the first time ah uh-huh. always See in the transformation altered, always in an altered state of mind yes yeah and so what maharaj ji's gaze could do to a person this is about it that day maharaj ji was in the, the the home and uh, jivan chacha happened to enter mm-hmm. he was intoxicated as usual and it is said that everybody was really frightened that what would happen next because often he would uh, start a quarrel with anybody for no reason oh uh-huh. so they thought we just can't say how he is going to behave in presence of maharaj ji uh-huh. so he entered the room his eyes were red with whatever intoxication he had taken at that time uh-huh. he was stumbling he his gait was unsteady uh-huh and he drew near maharaj ji mm-hmm. everybody was really frightened he could have done anything he was really intoxicated was absolutely unpredictable mm-hmm. but at that time as my father tells maharaj ji looked at him straight into his eyes and he stopped and gradually lowered his head before him and maharaj ji caught his hairs in his grip in his hand mm-hmm. and shook his head a few times and uh-huh. said go jao Ah. just that he caught hold of his hair the tuft yes. of his hair shook his head yes and said go jao he got up left the room without saying a word he did yes. not turn back he simply left the room and locked himself in one other room aha uh-huh. he probably felt very ashamed locked himself from inside uh-huh and he was crying he was crying loudly uh-huh so all the family members one by one went to him jivan open the door jivan open the door what has happened he would say go away go away i don't want to see anyone go away uh-huh. now this was a matter of concern and since he was not only he was brother of my father his cousin 
but he was a close friend as well. So in the end, my father was asked to see what he could do about the situation. Mm -hmm. So he knocked at the door and said, Jivan, it's me, open the door. So very reluctantly, he opened the door. Then father asked, what has happened? He said, nothing, you go away. Nothing, it's okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, finding that everything was all right with him and he was not in any kind of distress or danger, my father left the room. He lost it again. And when he eventually came out of the room, he was a completely changed person. After that instant, he never drank, he never had any smoke or anything. He was totally changed. Mm -hmm. And it did not take long for him to be recognized as Jivan Baba. Uh -huh. uh, yes, he's, he's talked about often. I've heard of his name. Yes. Uh, yes. I hope uh, I, I could see a, at least a picture of him someday. Yes. Yeah. He just passed last year only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Maharaji also, I remember hearing about uh, a darshan with Maharaji in which I saw the video actually, it's one of the few video clips of him mm -hmm. hitting Tawari on the head and Tawari's going back and he's slapping him on the forehead right in his third yeah. eye. Uh -huh. Yeah, he, he had a powerful way of altering people. Yes, uh, that was a very, very you know, and uh, that kind of gesture was pretty common at that time. Uh -huh. He hitting someone at head or shoulder or back. Uh -huh. he, he has come, slapped me a couple of times. <laughs> uh -huh. He has. Tell me about that. <laughs> and you know, uh, uh, many of people at that time, I was a kid at that time, you know, was, uh, he left his body in 73. I was 23 then, just 23. Mm -hmm. So, but I remember in his presence, Jivan Chacha would often go into Samadhi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He would lose his uh, consciousness. His body would become stiff. Mm -hmm. I remember. And uh, you know what Maharaj would say? He said, now Jivan is dead. <laughs> throw him, throw him, throw him away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He downplayed it. Huh. Amid the crowd, yeah, Jivan Baba himself would be sitting in the crowd and all of a sudden he would go in a trance and become a stiff and lose his consciousness. Uh -huh. uh, he would be ignored by Maharaji for some time. Then eventually he would say, Jivan is dead, throw him away. <laughs> so people would pick him up uh -huh. as if he was a sculpture, his uh -huh. body would be stiff. He would be carried to some other room and uh -huh. put there. And the Maharaj would then seem to have forgotten about him. Uh -huh. Then people will remind him, Maharaji, Jivan is still in that state. Uh -huh. Do something for him, mm -hmm. revive him. Mm -hmm. He said, let him die, let him die. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh>. It's good <laughs> to die. <laughs> Ego, death. Ego death. Yes. <laughs> but at last, he would just uh, get up from his head uh -huh. and go to that room. Uh -huh. And you know what he used to do there? What? He would remove his blanket uh -huh. and cover Jivan Baba with that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he would take his uh, hand inside uh, the blanket. And I have heard from those who knew it better that he used to place his finger in Jivan Baba's mouth uh -huh. and pull out his tongue. Uh -huh. 
and pull out his tongue and uh, well whatever he did then gradually jivan baba would resume consciousness uh -huh. gradually and we'll be all right after some time <laughs> but uh, that was a frequent sight at that time aha uh -huh. that's right yes yes he would become a statue he was so stiff yeah and many a times you 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 must have heard uh, he giving even money to people mm -hmm. some coins some currency and notes i i still have a 1 rupee note of that time that he gave to my father he tore it into two halves mm -hmm. and gave the half of that uh, one rupee note to my father mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is a half note not a <laughs> complete note uh -huh. and mamra uh, besides well uh, well i you know once while he was uh, with him in uh, in the home uh, it was after lunch and uh, he was on his tucker reclining as usual mm -hmm. and uh, by the side of the tucker there was a small table on which lay some newspapers and a piece of paper a pencil a stub he picked a newspaper Mm -hmm. and that piece of paper and as you as usual he was half um, supine on the uh, the tucker with his uh, one leg folded on the other knee ah uh, yes yes and he placed uh, the newspaper on his right thigh ah uh -huh. and on that paper he placed that almost a square piece of a small piece of paper and started writing with that stub of the pencil mm -hmm. he just wrote on for some time and then folded that piece of paper and gestured my father who was standing nearby to come near as he closed in he placed that folded piece of paper in his shirt pocket uh -huh. just slipped it there is that and said this is for you uh -huh. uh there was some other fellow who used uh, to visit maharaj ji very frequently he was there at that time and after that he asked my father show me what maharaj has given you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. father said look he slipped it into my pocket and it is folded i cannot dare to open it <laughs> let alone show you or see it myself <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. so that is in fact a relic now a is rather been seen rare relic from maharaj ji and yeah i have it i have it uh -huh. i have it i have it and um i'll really love to share the darshan of this relic of maharaj Do you have the, the, uh, the relic with you right now? Yes. Can you hold it up to the camera? Oh, Or yes. You see it? Yeah, I can see it. You I hope you can see it. Uh can you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Pull it back a little bit. Back. Yeah, uh, is it uh, oh, yeah. can you read it's, clearly? Yes, uh, it's his writing of Rams. Yeah. he has written in his writing uh -huh. about ram ram i think about 45 times uh huh yes you yeah. had it is, can you read it yes is yes. it visible yeah yes so this is the relic which yes. uh, maharaj ji uh -huh. gave as prasad to my father uh huh uh it should be around uh -huh. 56 57 uh -huh. here uh, 1956 1957 around that aha uh -huh. yeah so you can, this you can is put it down you can put it down i, I think 
Yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> worth the darshan, isn't it? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, uh, now, this has been with us ever since. And uh, um, sometime, well, uh, we will do uh, that story as well. It remained with the family. And uh, one day, after so many years, that is in 94, mm -hmm. 2004, in 2004, when Ramdas was visiting India, and I think that uh, it was his last visit also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that was his last trip. Yeah. Yeah. So Ramcharan, Adam, happened to be there at that time. Mm -hmm. And he told me about uh, Ramdas's visit and that he was staying in uh, Kanji. Uh -huh. I had met with Ramdas before as well. So I thought I should meet him. But then it occurred to me what I should carry for him for this meeting to be shown to him to present. Now, after so many years, what came to my mind was this piece of paper that I'll carry it uh -huh. as Prashad to show him uh -huh. that this is uh, Maharaj's writing. Yes. And mysteriously disappeared at that time. That is a different story. Uh -huh. So, this is the same piece of this is the piece paper. Of paper. That, that you... carries his writing. Yeah. 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 I could not uh, find it at that time. It was found out almost after one year or more than that. Uh -huh. Yeah. I was very much upset that we had lost it for <laughs> no reason. But now, this time, I did not forget to bring it along. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So this is Maharaj's writing. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. And and, and now uh, people have there are numerous uh, examples of his handwriting now. It's we're fortunate to have uh, different uh, images of it, uh, but yes. None like that. I've never seen anything like that. And, uh... In fact, I tell you, uh, uh, maybe you will notice that there are certain folds on this piece of paper because it is laminated. Yes. Uh -huh. When it got lost. Yes. And it remained lost for over a year. And when I found it, that's another story how I found it. But uh -huh. when I found it, this paper is pretty old paper, you know, and it's... Uh, not a very fine quality of paper. Mm -hmm. So with aging, I thought it will be better to have it protected. Yes. Good idea. So I got it laminated. Yes. So these are the lines uh, they, it had when it got lost. Mm -hmm. These are the creases. Uh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. You have relics from Maharaji in the bones.